Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, a few exam questions. Uh, the first one is on the screen. Okay, so uh, the first thing when you do these kind of questions is uh, to write out the, the sum formula for your geometric, and this is given in the formula book. So there we go, u1 is the first term, r is the common difference. Uh, once I've got that, I can actually then start filling out the information. So the sum of the first two terms, well, I know that n is going to be 2. I know that the answer, the sum of the first two terms is 1. So I can fill in this, this uh, equation here. And I also can fill in for S4, sum of the first four terms. So that's, uh, again, n is going to be 4 for this. And my answer is going to be 5. So I now have two equations. Uh, the next step is therefore to uh, simplify that. So this is uh, a simplified version of the S2 equation, and this is a simplified version of the S4 equation. Okay, and now what I can do if I if I notice that um, basically if I do equation two, so this uh, equation here divided by equation one. Um, that the u1s will cancel out so it's a way of uh, getting rid of the u1s so I now have an equation just in terms of r so there you go 1 minus r to the power 4 over 1 minus r squared is equal to 5 okay um, now I've got that well there's a few ways of, of trying to solve this equation um, one way would be to use your graphics calculator um, Another way is to, to notice that 1 minus r to the power 4 can be factorized as 1 plus r squared and 1 minus r squared. Um, and the reason we do that is because there's a 1 minus r squared on the bottom and therefore the, the 1 minus r squared will cancel out. So if I write it like that, I, I will end up with 1 plus r squared equals 5. Um, and pretty easy from here. Therefore, r squared is plus or minus. Um, well, sorry, it should be just r squared is four, and then r is going to be uh, plus or minus two. Um, and then, of course, the, the question says that r is going to be positive, so therefore the answer will will actually be r equals plus two. Okay. Um, once I've got my answer of r equals two. Um, I can then substitute the information back into the uh, equation that I had earlier, which was u1 uh, brackets 1 minus r squared brackets all over 1 minus r is equal to 1. So that was the sum of the first two terms being equal to 1. And now that I know that r is 2, I can put that value into, into the equation and therefore I get u1 equals 1 over 3. Okay, so here's another question. Um, this time testing we understand about sum to infinity as well. Okay, so the, the first part of the question uh, requires that we understand that we only have a sum to infinity if r is between minus 1 and 1. Okay, if uh, r is outside that range then we, we don't have uh, uh, we don't have a sum to infinity. Okay, so therefore um, we need two to the power x to be between minus one and one as well. Uh, um, hopefully, you might notice that uh, two to the x can never be negative. We can never get a negative number. Therefore, actually, the bound is going to be between zero uh, and one. And again, just by inspection. Well, the only way that 2 to the power x is going to be less than 1 is if x is, is negative itself. So therefore, x has to be less than 0. So as long as x is less than 0, we will have a sum to infinity. The second part um, tells us that the first term is 35. And we want to find the value of x for which the sum to infinity is 40. Okay, So we use our formula u1 over 1 minus r is 
uh, sum to infinity formula. Um, okay, we then put the values in. So 35 is u1, so 1 minus r is equal to 40. Oh, we rearrange that, and we're going to get r is equal to uh, 5 over 40, uh, which is equal to 1 over 8. Uh, once we've got that, well, we know that actually r is 2 to the power x, so therefore 2 to the power x is equal to 1 over 8, um, and then that will give us an answer of x is minus 3. Uh, and that's basically because 2 to the minus 3 is the same as 1 over 2 uh, cubed, because 1 over 2 cubed is, is 1 over 8. Okay, so my answer when x is minus 3. Okay, and then the last question, which uh, tests our knowledge of both geometric and arithmetic. Um, arithmetic sequence, first term of A, common difference of D, and the third, fourth, and seventh terms of the arithmetic sequence are the first three terms of the geometric sequence. Okay, so as before, let's start off by just writing out the nth term for the arithmetic. And then we use that and, and basically say, okay, let's let's say that A is our first term. And so the third term of the arithmetic is A plus 2D. The fourth term of the arithmetic is A plus 3D. And the seventh term of the arithmetic is A plus 6D. Now, I use the fact that these three terms here, the a plus 2d, the a plus 3d, a plus 6d are consecutive terms in a geometric sequence. Now, because they're consecutive in a geometric sequence, that means the difference between them is going to be constant. The, the ratio between the first and the second term, the second and third term will be constant. Therefore, if I do a plus 3d divided by a plus 2d, and if I do a plus 6d, divided by a plus 3d, so the, the upper term divided by the lower term on both times, they have to be the same because it's a geometric sequence. Okay, so once I've got that, I can cross multiply, so I'll bring this bottom part here over to the top part here, the bottom part here, to the top part here, and I end up with this, so basically just uh, some double brackets to expand. Uh, if I do d expand those brackets, I'll get uh, a, a squared and d squared and da's. If I simplify that, I will actually get a equals minus 3 over 2d, which is what the question asks. Okay, so for the second part of the question, well, this time I know that a is uh, minus 3 over 2d. Um, so therefore the, the three terms of the uh, geometric progression that I've got, the a plus 2d, the a plus 3d, and the a plus 6d, well, if a is minus 3 over 2d, I can substitute that in there. So the first term of my geometric is d over 2. The second term of my geometric is 3d over 2. The third term of my ge geometric is 9d over 2. Um, and I can see there that I'm multiplying by 3 each time. Therefore, the common difference for my geometric is 3. Therefore, if I want to find the fourth term, well, that's going to be u1 times rn minus 1. Therefore, the fourth term is the first term, which is d over 2 times 3 to the power 3, which is equal to 27 over 2. Uh, lots of d. And just to scroll back to this question, this is quite an important point, because it says show that, we can actually work from both sides. So we're, I've already shown what the fourth term of the geometric sequence looks like. If I basically now work out the 16th term of the arithmetic sequence, I can just basically just show that they're the same. 
so the 16th term of the arithmetic well I'm using this formula here u d, u n equals u1 plus n minus 1 times d so the 16th term u16 is minus 3 over 2d that's the first term plus 15 lots of d and therefore that does indeed give me 27 over 2 lots of d